The Land of the Dead In the land of the dead, Odysseus seeks to learn his destiny. The source of his information is Tiresias, the famous blind prophet from the city of Thebes. The prophet's lack of external sight suggests the presence of true sight. Sears has told Odysseus exactly what rites he must perform to bring Tiresias up from the dead. Odysseus continues telling his story to Alcinous's court. Then I address the blurred and breathless dead, vowing to slaughter my best heifer for them before she calved at home in Ithaca, and burn the choice bits on the altar fire. As for Tiresias, I swore to sacrifice a black lamb, handsomest of all our flock. Thus to assuage the nations of the dead, I pledge these rites, then slash the lamb and ewe, letting their black blood stream into the well pit. Now the souls gathered, staring out of Erebus, brides and young men, and men grown old in pain, and tender girls whose hearts were new to grief. Many were there, too, torn by brazen lance heads, battle slain, bearing still their bloody gear. From every side they came and sought the pit with rustling cries and I grew sick with fear. But presently I gave command to my officers to flay. Those sheep the bronze cut down and make burnt offerings of flesh to the gods below. Meanwhile, I crouched with my drawn sword to keep the surging phantoms from the body pit till I should know the presence of Tiresias. Soon, from the dark, that prince of thieves came forward bearing a golden staff, and he addressed me. Son of Laertes and the gods of old, Odysseus, master of landways and seaways, why leave the blazing sun, O man of woe, to see the cold dead and the joyless region? Stand clear, put up your sword. Let me but taste of blood, I shall speak true. At this I stepped aside, and in the scour let my long sword ring home to the pommel silver, as he bent down to the somber blood. Then spoke the prince of those with gift of speech. Great captain, a fair winds and the honey lights of home are all you seek, but anguish lies ahead. The God who thunders on the land prepares it, not to be shaken from your track, implacable in rancor for the sun whose eye you blinded. One narrow strait may take you through his blows, denial of yourself, restraint of shipmates. When you make landfall on Thrinacia first and quit the violent sea, dark on the land you'll find the grazing herds of Helios by whom all things are seen, all speech is known. Avoid those kind. Hold fast to your intent, and hard seafaring brings you all to Ithaca. But if you raid the beeves, I see destruction for ship and crew. Though you survive alone, bereft of all companions, lost for years, under strange sail shall you come home to find your own house filled with trouble Insolent men eating your livestock as they court your lady. A, you shall make those men atone in blood, but after you have dealt out death in open combat or by stealth 
to all the suitors, go over land on foot and take an oar until one day you come where men have lived with meat unsalted, never known the sea, nor seen sea-going ships with crimson bows and oars that fledge light hulls for dipping flight. The spot will soon be plain to you, and I can tell you how, some passerby will say. What winnowing fan is that upon your shoulder? Halt, and implant your smooth oar in the turf and make fair sacrifice to Lord Poseidon. A ram, a bull, a great buck boar, turn back and carry out pure hecatombs. At home to all wide heaven's lords, the undying gods to each in order. Then a seaborn death, soft as this hand of mist, will come upon you when you are wearied out with rich old age, your country folk in blessed peace around you. And all this shall be just as I foretell. <laughs>